they are, man. And you know, like you're, you want their knowledge, and they give you back their knowledge, and you know, um, you take what they've uh, said to you, and of course, you have to have knowledge on the subject, and you just, you know, clarify everything for them. And I, I just do these little techniques. I mean, there's more that I've used, but like I said, I'm basically online, and I haven't found it hard whatsoever to. You know, difficult at all to get this out. That's a really good uh, thing you're doing there, Chris. Um, I'm, I got another caller coming in, and uh, sure, yeah, go ahead. I just want everybody no, to, uh, you know, maybe don't pick hang up, up on Chris. Things. I want you to stay on the line, okay? Uh, yeah, another sure. caller, uh, another caller from three one seven area code. Uh, you're on the air. Hi, my name is Sam. Um, can you hear me? Hey Sam, welcome uh, to IZM Radio. Uh, what are your thoughts to add to the topic today? Well, I wanted to offer uh, some observation that, and I enjoyed the, the discourse between the two of you. Um, but in my experience as an educator, when uh, people learn in experience, and what you're trying to do is to give people education as to how they can engage, to engage with another person, but uh, maybe for another broadcast, you guys can go through a role-playing exercise, which would basically put the listener in the experience and uh, perhaps uh, learn even more on how to communicate the message of the Venus Project and the Guys Movement. So I thought that That's would be That's an helpful. excellent idea. That's an excellent idea. And furthermore, I'm, uh, I've been aware of the project now for about a year, and I was able to even go over to Columbus, Ohio, and I was hoping to see Jock Fresco, but uh, uh, Doc Stan made the presentation on a, on a campus, and I, I wasn't aware at that time, and that was back in November, that there was an Indiana movement, so I'm glad to know that that is the case now, and um, I'm coming up teaching that the more Indiana uh, members and trying to enlarge the, I think there's only 28 people in, in Indiana so far that are aware or in, in uh, email Show have been given. So, um, but as, as someone yeah, who's talk to me, you just can't cry. Start to get the word out, um, other than sending people to the, the websites to watch the videos, that's, the, the, the topic is so vast that people have a hard time in even grasping what you're talking about. It seems so science-fictional that um, I'm hesitant to really engage anyone because um, it's, it's difficult for someone with all their biases and their own previous learning to, to grasp what we're trying to say. I mean, a non-monetary system, I mean, People can't imagine that unless you go back to you know, the Stone Age when it was just a barter system. And maybe that's not a bad example, <laughs> but it just seems so, um, the, the topic is so large. So I'd be interested in your thoughts on how to just engage someone who's of um, moderate educational background. Um, what would be a, a couple of good opening segues into beginning a dialogue? Uh, well, it, to me it would seem that the first place to start is always with the understanding of uh, what relative basis that you're, the person you're trying to talk to has. Uh, you know, how much they understand about the way things work. Um, because just just because a person isn't very well educated does not mean that they, they don't have an uh, intuition into the processes uh, and the functions of society, um, because you, you you may get a very low score on your IQ test or on your SAT, but you you may also have a very very good understanding of your immediate environment and how to interact in it. And one of the biggest issues that we have is under is getting people to understand that a lot of those root problems of the whole of society also exist inside of our small communities and inside of our environments, even inside of our 
home and our family environments and relationships. Um, I've only got three minutes here left on the air. Um, so I don't want uh, Sam or Chris, I don't want either one of you to hang up. Um, I, I want to be able to talk to you guys some more uh, after we get off the air here. Uh, but I want to uh, give Mel uh, one last opportunity uh, for any final comments he may have. Yes, uh, I did want to say one other thing. Um, I think uh, what you said was exactly right. Uh, you, you have to understand the person so that you can actually communicate uh, the, the ideals. And the best way to do it, I've learned, especially when a conversation has already begun, is to sit and wait and listen to the person. Uh, if a guy's going to go on rambling real qu all the time about sports and things like that, you know, uh, perhaps maybe you can you can use that particular conversation to to uh, talk about uh, what sports would be like in a in a moneyless society or or something to that effect. Uh, get you know get that person to think uh, out of the box in an abstract fashion. They might look at you kind of weird, or they might say, "Well, what do you mean moneyless? You know, I, I don't understand where you're coming from." Right there, you know, they they've already said, uh, "Okay, teach me." And so uh, that's one way you can get to another person. But the main thing, of course, is to ask them. Ask them what's, what interests them, and then use that and learn from their triggers and their buttons. And uh, I want to thank you for inviting me on the show. I want you guys to have a great life. I'm going to head on out of here, and um, I'd like to have you on my show as well here real soon, okay? Hey, I'm looking forward to it, Mel, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on the air with me. Uh, your insight is always invaluable. And uh, you, you reference the Socratic method a lot, and I, I don't have as great an understanding about that as you do. Uh, and uh, But I've been looking into it more and more because you've brought it up a couple of times, and the, it's I'm, I'm coming to find it, it holds a lot more relevance every time uh, I uh, every time I think about it when I'm talking to people. Well, I'm glad so to hear that. I am going to. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna play out the hour here uh, with one of my favorite uh, clips here from uh, Mr. Martin Luther King. And but I want I want you to stay on the air with me there, uh, Chris and Sam, because I want to talk to you guys more. So uh, thank you everybody for uh, tuning in and listening to this uh, episode of IZM Radio, for those of you who are live, and thank you very much for those of you catching this uh, on the archive. And have a great day. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will... All right. Uh, you're still there, guys. Oh, yeah. All right. We are officially no longer on the air for the hour. Uh, I really appreciate you guys calling in. Uh, it's really oh, yeah, good to uh, have somebody from Indiana on the show. I wasn't quite sure uh, anybody in the state actually knew what was going on. <laughs> I, I really can't believe that uh, there isn't more. It's, I, I'm, a, I'm so excited about, I mean, I didn't even know I was part of the whole zeitgeist uh, movement. I was just uh, uh, pushing the whole Venus Project idea. I, and then everybody's got people attacking me. Oh, you're part of that zeitgeist propaganda. I'm like, I don't even know who's that guy. What is what it's even about? You know, 